wake up from the slumber that they're in and call on the name of Jesus. And so our assignment is to get ready to receive the millions of people that's going to come home. Every prodigal, every person that's out there in the world, we got to get ready for them to come in. Amen. It's going to be wonderful. It's going to be glorious. It's going to be a blessing. But are you ready? Are you ready to come in and somebody's in your seat? Are you ready to come in and, some, and there's unchurched people that don't know church etiquette? They don't know how to talk the talk or walk the walk or own a Bible or even know how to dress. Are you willing to be patient with them and help them? Are you willing to pray for them? Or are we just going to look down our nose at them and judge them for where they are? Because I'll be honest with you, you were in their shoes one time and somebody loved you enough to help pull you out. And so that's where the people of God should be. We should just extend the hand of help to our brothers and sisters and help them come on in. I'm so excited about it. Do you know, I'm 44 years old, and never in history, never in my history have I ever anticipated a move of God so much. I've wanted it for a long time. I've dreamt about it for a long time. God's given me a glimpse of it and words on it. And I'm telling you, where God's taking us, it's going to be magnificent, but it's going to come with great attack. Because you don't win in God without the enemy getting upset about it. Amen. You don't pull somebody out of the fire without him getting upset that you done took somebody out of his kingdom and brought them into the kingdom of life. So we got to fortify ourselves and fortify our hearts. And how do we do that? We got to build it upon the word of the living God. The word of the living God. Praise the Lord. Every day they dig up stuff that proves the Bible's right. And you know what they do with it? They stick it in a, in a, in a building somewhere in a warehouse. They just shh. We don't want this to get out. It'll just prove the Bible's right. I'm telling you, the Bible is correct and accurate and historically, uh, truthfully accurate. And that is why God says that we should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Are you ready? Y'all ready to dive in? Or y'all just want to tread lightly? Y'all want to tiptoe through the tulips? What do y'all want to do? Y'all want to go in the deep end? Y'all want to go all the way? Let's go all the way. Let's dive in head first. Head first. No going back. No plan B. We're getting wet today. Amen. We're getting wet. Praise God. I know some, some of y'all ladies, y'all, the way y'all swim is uh, uh, you, get, you get in, and, but your head don't go under. I just did my hair yesterday and I can't get it wet. So, no, we ain't, that's not how we're going in today. We're going in head first. Amen. Off the high dive. All right. We're in crazy acts of faith. Crazy acts of faith. And is this part two? This is part two. We skipped last week because we were uh, rocking it from the 80s. Amen. <clears throat> and, uh, all right, so here we go. First Kings chapter 17. Go to first Kings 17. Praise the Lord. Y'all don't mind if I have me a little snack, do you? Huh? It's fresh. It's fresh baked bread right here, buddy. Fresh baked bread. Look at that. Mm. That looks good, don't it? Huh? Mm, I'm going to cut this up and turn this into French toast. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. <clears throat> Here we go. We're going to be talking about uh, a little woman who made a little cake. But made a big impact. Made a little cake. But made a big impact. <clears throat> Here we go. Verse 1. Y'all ready? It says, and Elijah, the Tishbite, who was in the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, as the Lord God of Israel liveth, whom before I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. Did you hear that? This prophet, this man of God told the king, it ain't going to rain because I said so. Man. 
That's authority. I like to roll up to the White House and be like, if y'all don't get some stuff straight, it ain't going to rain. Go over to the House of Representatives. If you don't get your act right, I'm going to tell it not to rain, and it'll listen to me. But this is what authority is. This man had so much anointing on his life that he could speak to the weather and the weather would listen to him. That sounds like another guy we heard of. His name was Jesus who stood on the bow of the boat and looked at the winds and the waves and said, peace, be still, just y'all calm down. And everything just chilled right out. See, as a matter of fact, he was tapping into his anointing for his life. And that is, that is the same authority. I want you to know the same authority that Jesus had is not unique to Jesus. Because he did not walk in as the son of God. When he did all of those, he did them as the son of man anointed by God. There was only a few times where we actually saw or read about where they saw him in his glory. One of them was on the mountain of transfiguration when he uh, became to them and showed them who he really was transformed in this figure of light. And they fell down and worshiped him. And Peter got so excited after it. He said, let's build three temples on top of this mountain. Right? He got so happy and excited, but, but they got to see him for his glory. But he was, just a, he was just a son of man. And because he was the son of man and he did miracle signs and wonders, he did it as an example, as the first, as, as the first example of what an obedient child of God looks like and what the blessings and the results come from somebody being obedient to the father. See, he was called the second Adam. The first Adam failed. The second Adam came back, right? The second battle, the Adam came back and took everything that was lost under the first Adam and restored it back to us. That's why we have to go through Jesus. That's why we pray in Jesus name. That's why we go through him because he's the only one that did that for us. But this man had an anointing, Elijah, Elijah had an anointing that he told the weather what to do. That's amazing to me. <clears throat> All right, so he commanded it not to rain, nor any dew. And he was specific. There ain't even going to be any mountain dew. It says, and the word of the Lord came unto him saying, get thee hence and turn thou eastward and hide yourself by the brook Cherith. That is before Jordan. So God gives Elijah instructions to go down to the brook Cherith. <clears throat> and it said, and it shall be that that thou shalt drink of the brook, and I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. So not only did the Lord tell him where to go, he said, you can go and drink of the water that's going to be provided, but I also I commanded the ravens to come and bring you food while you are there. Whatever the ravens would find, they would go and bring it to Elijah. Man, that's better than DoorDash. <laughs> he didn't even have to pay the extra delivery fee to get it either. But I want you to know something. I want, to, I want to point this out to you just for a second before we move on because this is an important part of this story. I want you to notice that God commanded him to go to a specific place at a specific time and that God was going to do something in that location. He said, I have commanded the ravens to feed you there. If he never went there, he'd have never got provision. If he'd have never showed up and obeyed God and told, and listen, let me tell you something. I don't know why, why we have an issue with uh, listening to God's instructions. I don't know why. Sometimes we do. And those of you out here, I, I always listen to God. Okay, go and tell that to the wall because I don't believe you. I believe sometimes God will give you instructions and you're like, they're so simple. It's so easy. I, I, I can't do that. I don't want to do that. But God gives you instructions because he's got a plan in those instructions to bring a blessing to you and to bring a blessing to somebody else. And it all works together in his plan. That's how God works. So when God gives you an instruction, just do it. Don't buck God. We make, it a, we make it a national pastime to buck God. I'll do it my way. I'll do it the way I want. And then you'll fall down, scrape your knees. You'll get a boo-boo. And then you get up and you're like, Lord, forgive me. Amen? Right, because we're hard-headed sometimes. It takes us several times around the block to figure it out. 
And so he said, I've commanded the ravens to feed you right there at that specific place. All right, says, so he went and did according to the word of the Lord, for he went and dwelt by the brook Sherith, that is before Jordan, and the ravens brought him bread and flesh in the morning and bread and the flesh in the evening, and he drank of the brook. I like that the Bible gives me details about how this thing went down. I want to know that he was getting fed in the morning. I like to know he was getting fed in the evening. He was getting delivered DoorDash Chick-fil-A sandwiches right as he was sitting by the brook, y'all. When he was thirsty, he drank. When he was hungry, it showed up. He ate. There is provision in obedience. I'm going to say that again for some of you that didn't hear it the first time. There is provision in obedience. God will never instruct you to do something. You do it for him and then he leave you hanging. That will never happen in your life, I promise you. God will make sure you have. God will take care of your needs. God will take care of your house. God will take care of every situation in your life. There's only one condition. Just follow him. Just listen to him. Just do what he says. It sounds so simple, but it really is a revelation that we all need to grab a hold of. If he speaks, we should listen. So if we follow, we'll be taken care of. Did the disciples ever have a need in their life? No, no, they were always taken care of. They always ate. Why? Because they were hanging around Jesus. And they were following Jesus. And they always got taken. Even when they had questions, even they were acting dumb, God still took care of them. They're over here fighting about who's going to be second in command of, of behind Jesus. Who's going to be at your right hand, Lord? He still provided for them. He still took care of them. So it's okay. You can have some dumb moments in your life. And God will still take care of you. I promise he will. Amen, somebody? Anybody say that I've been a recipient of the blessings of God even when I was dumb. Amen. Somebody raise your hand, tell the truth, shame the devil this morning. Amen. Some of y'all could raise three hands if you had them. So what happened? He got fed. And then in verse 7, it came to pass after a while that the brook dried up because there had been no rain in the land. That's what happens when it don't rain. The brook dried up. And some of you would probably sit and say, well, it dried up, Pastor Shannon. Oh, man, he was doing what God said, and it dried up. I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to have some dried up places in your life. You're going to be following God, and you're going to walk in a dry place. You're going to be listening to God, and you're going to walk in a dry place. You're going to be doing what God says and feel like you haven't felt rain of God in your life in a long time. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God will make you uncomfortable in order to get you to move somewhere. Move out of the place you're in. Move out of the place because you can't always stay in the same place doing the same thing. Because God had an assignment for Elijah, and God wanted him to move, and he knew as long as there was bread and flesh in the morning, bread and flesh in the evening, and water to drink at that brook, he would have never left. So all that dried up. I'm not one of those ones. I will, I'm not the prosperity gospel preacher that will tell you if you obey God, you'll always have a million dollars in your account, and you'll never have a need in your life. No, I'm the one that will look at you and say, sometimes you will run out, but you'll have to call on God to get more. Sometimes there'll be a time of desperation in your world, and you will need to cry out to God, and God will teach you how to get on your knees again and call on him. I wish I had somebody in here because y'all ain't happy about it, but I'm telling you, every Every time, just like Paul, he said, I asked for this thorn in my flesh to be taken from me three times. And God didn't take it from me. But then he turned right around and said, I thank God because it kept me before him. It kept me humble. It kept me in prayer. You might despise the thing that drove you to God, but God does not. The trial that pushed you over the edge that got you to finally surrender to God is the trial that God said, hallelujah. Amen. Some of y'all, it took some jail time in order to figure that one out. Some of y'all, it took some time in the, in the hospital before you woke up and realized. Some of, some of you, it took somebody sitting you down face to face and saying, we having an intervention. Whatever it takes, Amen. Whatever it would you rather not go through what you went through and just be a hellion? Would you rather have that? 
Or would you live in the grace of God? Would you rather live with the love of God? Would you, would you rather have what you have now? Come on. I'd rather be where I am and going through what I went through instead of being left out in the dark and left out in the cold and, and not know what I know now. I'm telling you, God, I believe that song and I believe the scripture, Romans 8, 28, for God will uh, take anything and turn it into good for you. He'll turn the bad into good. He'll turn the negative into a positive. So he was at the brook and it dried up, didn't it? Because there was no rain in the land. Whose fault was that? That was his fault. Because it was at his word. All right, so it says, And the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, I like that the Lord speaks to him at the right times. I think God always speaks at the right times. I just think sometimes we're not listening. We've got to make sure our spiritual ears are ready and turned on. Because it'll sometimes come through vessels that you don't like. It'll come through somebody that all of a sudden, you ever had somebody give you a word and they, you don't even know where it came from. They ain't coming if you say the Lord said, but they just, they say, you know what? You know what? I feel, you know, you just need somebody to tell you this and this and this. And you look at them like, how did, how'd you know what to tell me? That's exactly what I needed to hear right now. God will, tell, God will speak through some people. They don't even know that God's using their words and their tongue and their lips to speak something to you that you need to hear. So the word of the Lord came saying, and once the instructions arise, get up to Zarephath, which belongs to Zidon, and dwell there. And behold, I have commanded a widow woman there to sustain thee. Okay, he's commanded a widow woman to sustain thee. So he arose and went to Zarephath, and when he came to the gate of the city, behold, the widow woman was there gathering sticks, and he called to her and said, Fetch me, I pray thee, a little water in a vessel that I may drink. So he shows up where he's supposed to. He finds this little widow woman, and what happens? He says, Listen, I... I need a little bit of uh, drink. Can you, can you get me something to drink? And as she was going to fetch it, notice that she was just, she did it. The Bible doesn't say she got mad. The Bible doesn't say she huffed and puffed. The Bible didn't say that she put on her women's lib hat and started protesting and marching. Who is this stranger man showing up asking water, asking me to get water? He better mind his business. He looks like a strong man. Why can't he get his own water? His legs ain't broke. Go get it yourself. How many knows that kindness and the gesture of kindness sometimes is the what opens the door for your miracle? Let me tell you something. I ain't never seen nobody. I ain't never seen nothing good happen for somebody out here yelling and screaming at each other. And I, our society's full of it. Yell and scream, mad, throw bricks at somebody. It's just, it's, it's, it's terrible. Nobody sits down and talks anymore. Nobody sits down and has a conversation. It's just terrible. But this woman was asked to go get some water. She didn't know this man from Adam's house, cat, and she goes and gets him water. I think this is, I think this is one of the, one, one of the most unique stories that I've ever read in the Bible. We, we forget the thing that she has no idea who he is. And guess what? We're going to find out something in a minute. We're going to find out something that, listen, God, I want to tell you, listen, God told Elijah, I commanded the widow woman to sustain thee there. But I want you to know he did not tell the widow woman. Is this thing on? Oh, man. He just went right over your head. I'm just going to say this. Sometimes God's got plans for you, and he ain't told you about the plans. He's just going to present you with the opportunity and see what you do. See how you do it. See how you handle it. He told Elijah, I sent you there, and she's going to take care of you. He did not send her word. 
I'm telling you right now, her miracle and her blessing, y'all, y'all, y'all don't even understand. God's got a series of blessings for her with her name on it. He just wants to see if she's going to be kind or not. She, he going to see if she's got an attitude or not. And guess what? If you can't give, you can't receive. I'm just telling you right now, some of y'all going to get mad to me about this, but if you never give out, you will never get back in because that is a principle of God almighty. In the Bible does, never, does not say that he ever told her. And when I was reading this, this jumped out at me. Boom. And I said, how many times did God have a plan for me? And I missed it. Because I was in my feelings. Or I was having a bad day. And God said, go do that. And I was like, I ain't got time for that. I ain't got time to pray for that person. I ain't got time to share my testimony with them because I'm in a hurry and I'm tired and I've worked eight hours already today and I've dealt with idiots and I'm ready to go home. God sometimes will just see if you are willing to do something in the name of Jesus or for somebody else to get outside of yourself. And guess what? In that plan, in that question, in that one question, God had a plan to bless her. All right, so he asked for water. She went to fetch it. And then he called to her again. All right, so just put yourself, all right, put yourself in this woman's shoes. Hey, I'm thirsty. Will you get me some water? Well, sure, sure. I'll, I'll go get some water. And then while she's going to get the water, he asks another question. Hey, uh, bring me, I pray thee, a morsel of bread in your hand. Could you hear? I could hear this woman right now. I could hear a 2022 20, woman. I'm trying to get him some water because he's asked me for some water. And now in the middle of me asking for some water, he's going to ask me to get him some bread. <laughs> Who does he think he is? I can't even get back with the water for he got another question for me. Y'all know what I'm talking about. I ain't fitting to have that. I'm about to run him off. I'm about to tell him what. Because I am woman. Hear me roar. <laughs> He's too needy. He asks for too much. I don't even know his name. Asking me for some bread. Verse 12. Here's what she says. She responds. As the Lord thy God. Notice she didn't have an attitude. She said, as the Lord thy God lives, I have not a cake, but a handful of meal in a barrel and a little oil in a cruise. And behold, what, 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 was, what, what did he find her doing when, when, when she was gathering sticks, right? So she stopped gathering sticks to go get him some water. She said, well, what, what, what I was doing here is I was gathering two sticks. Don't sound like a big fire to me. That I may go in and dress it for me and my son, that we may eat it and die. Look at somebody and say, that was her plan. See, God knew what was going on in her life. And God knew what was going on in Elijah's life. And God was going to take both acts of obedience and see if he could produce a nice miracle for both of them. But it required both of them. It required, but her plan, you know what? All I got is a little bit of oil in a cruise. And actually the word cruise means like a little flat plate, but I didn't have a flat plate and I wasn't there putting oil in a flat plate on this sanctuary. Because <laughs> sure as the world, it'd get knocked over and bumped over and we've been here sucking olive oil off the carpet. But anyway, here's oil in a cruise. It's just a little bit. And then we got some, we got some meal, you know, right here that we're going to use. And you know what? Me and my son, we're going to go and we're going to make us a cake. And our plan is we don't have any more. So our plan is we're going to sit there until we die. Because he said, I just want a little piece of bread. I just want a little chunk of bread. I don't even have bread. All I got at my house is a little bit of something. I want you to know that your resources and what you have does not determine the outcome of God intervening in your situation. Her excuse was all I got is a little bit. And God's reply is that's all I need. 
So if you got a little bit, bring it to him. If you just got a little bit, show him what you got. Because God don't need an army. He just needs one obedient person. And this was this woman, she would have been low down on the statue. She didn't even have a man. She was a widow. Her husband died. She's got a son. They barely got anything. And you know what? People would probably look down on her. Look at her. Look at her situation. Look how look how her life's done when she done ran out of everything. She mismanaged her money. She mismanaged her resources. Look at look at her. Look how terrible she is. You know, she used to be somebody. She used to keep herself up. She used to have her hair done or makeup. She used to wear nice clothes, but now she don't have anything. That ain't how God sees it. Somebody look at somebody say, a little is a lot. If God's in it. The Bible says that he gave every man a measure of faith. And the Bible says that the faith, like a, the size of a grain of a mustard seed, can move mountains. All it takes is a little bit with God. And God can do great multiplication with that. God is in the multiplying business and he will always multiply. All you got to do is bring your faith and let him see your faith. This woman had to have some faith. I don't know you. You asking me for water? I done got you water. You asking me for bread? And guess what? I don't have no bread. And then guess what? I don't even have a cake of bread. Let me tell you what I got. All I got is a little bit. A little bit of oil. A little bit of meal. I'm going to make it. We're going to eat it. And my plan is to die. How many people was destined on a path to death before God intervened? She didn't have a retirement plan. She didn't have a two-year plan. She, I'm going to go to school for two years, and I'm going to get my degree. And then once I get my degree, I'll get out of school. And then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get me a better place to live. I'm going to get me a better job. No, she didn't have. She, you know what? She, she had planned out for probably the next week. I'm going to make a cake. I'm going to cut it in half. Me and my son's going to eat it. And our plan is to die. And Elijah said unto her, fear not. Bam! That's it. If there's two words that I could preach from this message today that you would take home with you, those are the two words, don't fear. Don't you fear, because every time there is an opportunity for you to do something for God, fear guaranteed will show up on your doorstep. Fear will always prevent itself and show itself before there is an act of faith. It doesn't matter if you have been serving God six months, six years, or 60 years. You will always have this fear creep up. Well, what if it don't work out? What if you make him a cake first? What if he just takes it and runs out? What if that's all you got and then you are suffering even more than what you are right now? The enemy lied to her just like he will lie to you and a lot of your family. I can guarantee that. Don't fear. Every place you see of a faithful place of provision in the Bible, there was a opportunity to fear right before it. I want you to go possess the land. Oh, really? There's giants over there. Yeah, but it's flowing with milk and honey and there's great bountiful blessings and there, there's houses already there. They're yours. I gave them to you. You just got to go get them. Yeah, but we're like grasshoppers in their sight. They're big people. They're giants. So guess what? They wandered around for 40 years until all those people that didn't believe they could have it died off. Guess what? They believed they couldn't have it and they didn't have it hearing me? You, are you picking up what I'm putting down? I said they did not receive what they should have received. Because they didn't believe that they could receive it. They didn't have faith. They had fear. They had more fear. Listen, the God that produced all the plagues upon Egypt, brought them out of Egypt, brought them across, took care of the armies of Pharaoh, did all of that. And then they're going to sit there and say, we don't believe the same God's going to take us and take care of the enemies that we have in front of us. Let me remind you, if God took care of your enemies behind you, God will take care of your enemies in front of you. And then, and again, and again, and again, because our God does not deliver halfway. God will deliver you all the way. I need somebody to say thank you Jesus in this house. God will bring you all the way through it. Her plan, her plan involved her and her son. It did not involve some strange guy showing up and asking. Sometimes the plans of God will throw yours out of whack. 
But you don't know, I had, I had all my life planned out, and I had this planned out, and I had this figured out. <laughs> Joke's on you. Because that wasn't in God's plan, and God had a different idea. But that doesn't mean it's not God. Some of you had no desire in your life to go through some of the things you went through. But you went through it. And you lived it. And you cried about it. And you laid down and you were depressed about it. And you were upset about it. But I'm telling you, you just don't live there. You get up and you say, you know what? God can turn this around in my life too. You know what? God has a plan with my name on it. You need to receive that today. God has a plan with your name on it. And don't you fret about the things that don't go the way you think they should go. I got to hurry. I got to hurry. Where are we at? What verse are we at? Jesus. 14. Thank you. 13. Y'all don't fight about it. <laughs> and Elijah said unto her, fear not. Go and do as thou hast said. But make me a little cake first. And bring it to me. My God. <laughs> Go make it. Prepare it, cook it, and then deliver it to me. I'm going to tell you right now, 2022, this story wouldn't happen. <laughs> the prophet of God would have had to get some other means to, to be, take care of his, uh, his, his need for some bread. Because this one, the 2022 women wouldn't have done this. And y'all know it's the truth. I, I need a man to take care of me. I don't know what kind of man going to show up and ask me to take care of him by God. It's quiet in here. I'm just going to let that simmer a minute. He wants me to deliver it to go make the cake and bring it. Joy's over there going, mm -mm, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Thank you for being honest, Joy. This is a lot. This ain't, listen, she had plenty. She, when, when, when he found her, she was gotten, she's getting sticks. Let me get them sticks. I'm going to go make me a little fire. I'm going to make this. I'm going to cook this. I'm going to prepare this little bit of bread, and I'm going to eat it. We're going to die. And then there, it just interrupts everything. Now this man's got me taking orders from him. Now this man's got me making him a little cake first. Don't he know this? Is, all I got is a little bit left. So what happens? She does something absolutely crazy. She listens to him. She does exactly what this man said to her. She did exactly as the instructions were. And this is what he said. Thus saith the Lord, verse 14. For thus saith the Lord God of Israel. The barrel, listen to this. This is, this is the first time God speaks in this situation. The rest of the time, it was just the prophet speaking. Oh, he's just, he's just a greedy man of God. Look at him. Ask him for some bread, asking for sustenance, asking for stuff. How many of y'all would have made a video about him, put him on YouTube? <laughs> False prophets of the Lord, Elijah. <laughs> Picture of Elijah going. <laughs> no, he, he was asking because God was sending him. You see, God, remember, God did not tell this woman that he had plans to use her for this. He said, thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sends rain upon the earth. That's the word of the Lord. That's the promise of God. If you will make me a little cake first, I will make sure that this bowl never runs out. That it will. I know there's only a little bit in there, but I'll make sure as the, as the more you scoop, the more it's going to show up. And the more you pull this oil, the more you pull this oil, it's going to continue to flow. It's going to continue to work. I'm going to continue to make it. Even though it doesn't look like it's much, I'm telling you, I'm going to make it flow and continue. This is God's promise to her. This is God speaking. I know you can't see how I'm going to do it, but I'm a miracle working God and I don't have to tell you how I'm going to do it. I just want you to do what I tell you and I will forever bless you with your act of obedience. Sometimes we have to stop. Well, uh, you know, these, these, uh, uh, these theological, uh, intellectual Christians. Well, I just don't know how God can make the meal multiply. Shut up and receive. 
I need someone to explain to me how the Lord can make the oil just keep pouring and pouring and pouring. Shut up and receive of God. But she still had to do what God told her to do, right? So here's the thing. This is what happened. So she went and did according to the saying of Elijah. And she and her house did eat many days. And the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the oil of cruise fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by who? By Elijah. Everything Elijah told her came to pass. Everything Elijah said happened the way. So she, you know what she did? Instead of making, making a piece of bread, maybe like this big, she made him just the little one first. Just honor me first with the little bit, with the little portion. Just, just give me a little bit. You know what? That's what God does. God says, I, I, I don't have to have it all. I just, want, I just want you to see that you trust me. I just want you to see if you'll trust me or not. Just, 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 just do the little thing that I ask you so I can do something big in your life. It's like that one time I had Carson. <clears throat> Carson had a, we went to Carowinds. This was a few years ago. and He had, he had won this ball. And, and um, I, said, I said, there was a little boy over there. He, he didn't have a ball. And I said, go give him that ball. I, I, I just got this ball, Dad. I just got it. Why, why, why are you asking me to give it to him? Because I'm just, I'm just asking you to do it. But see, what he didn't know is that I had a plan in my head that I was going to go back and get him a better ball than the one that he was going to give to that kid. But I didn't reveal the plan. I just wanted to see if he'd be generous to this little boy who didn't have a ball. And he looked kind of sad at Carowinds. And I'm just telling you, it's kind of sad. Walk around, see some little kid not happy at Carowinds. It's like you should be excited about, you know, riding, riding, throwing up. Like it should be, make you happy. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what I wanted today. So I asked him, I said, go and do it, go and do it. It took me, it took me about five minutes to convince him. But what he, what he did not know is that I had a pocket full of money that said I was going back and I was going to get him a better ball than the one he had before. And I was just testing to see. And that's how God works with us sometimes. Sometimes we don't know what God has in store for us. And he's just saying, just do this little thing first and let me do the rest. I got a plan for you. And you know, we just need to learn to be obedient children because obedient children always get rewarded. They always get blessed every time. I can't tell you there's not a time that an obedient child did not get a reward for doing what they did. And the say, God's even better than you are. God will reward his kids for everything they do. Uh, so this is what happened. It says, and it came to pass after these things that the son of the woman, the, uh, the mistress of the house fell sick. And his sickness was so sore that there was no breath left in him. Oh, so not only, not only did God sustain them and take care of them for many days. The Bible says many days. I don't know how many days, but it was many. Say many. many. So now the son dies. The same son. And she was going to eat a little cake and they were both going to die. That was her plan. But now he's been alive all this time. But now he's dead. What are we going to do? Huh? Let's go to Elijah. So she went to Elijah. <clears throat> what have I to do with thee, O man, O thou man of God? Art thou coming to me to call my sin to remembrance and to slay my son? She has a very skewed idea of God. If he's the man of God, you're going to bring my sin back up. You're going to slay my son. That's how a lot of people view God. Like God. God writes the evil in your life or brings the chaos in us. And he doesn't. It says, and he said unto her, give me thy son. And he took him out of her bosom and carried him up into the loft where he abode and laid him upon his own bed. And he cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord God, hast thou also brought evil upon the widow with whom I sojourned by slaying her son? And he stretched himself upon the child three times and cried unto the Lord and said, O Lord my God, I pray thee, let this child's soul come into him again. And the Lord heard the voice of Elijah, and the soul of the child came unto him again, and he revived. He revived. 
came back to life, didn't he? And Elijah took the child and brought him down out of the chamber into the house of God and delivered him unto his mother. And Elijah said, see, your son lives. How many miracles has God done in this woman's life because she obeyed? She would have already been dead if she hadn't followed the plan that God had for her and the word of Elijah. She'd already been dead, her and her son. But now her son has died and now she still has an opportunity for God to do something else for her and God provide. Let me tell you, if she had never listened to the fetch of water, if she had never listened to go get me a piece of bread, well, I don't have bread. I'm just going to make me a little thing for me and my son. Make me a little cake first and the, and the word of the Lord says you'll never run out. He'll take care of you many days. Oh, okay. Well, then I'll do that. She obeys and God gives her more days and then her son dies and guess what? Now she has the means to cry out unto God because her first obedience. How many knows your first obedience will take you to the second obedience? God will give you time after time after time to obey him. But your first obedience will always carry you to the opportunity where there is another obedience. It will always take you all the way through. You don't have to worry about it. Until God gives you another opportunity, he will make sure you have that opportunity. Hmm. All right, so what happens? What'd she say? Your son, he said, your son lives, see? And the woman said to Elijah, now pay attention, because, and, and I'm, I'm wrapping this up. And the woman said unto Elijah, now, by this, I know that you are a man of God, and that the word of the Lord is in your mouth, and it's truth. I, I, yeah, I'm thankful she believes now. But my issue is, why now? Now I know you're a man of God. Now I can see you're a man of God. No, you just been living off this meal and this oil, and we've been making bread for for months now. And you now you think I'm a man of God. Before I wasn't a man of God, but now I'm a man of God. I got something to say about this. The only people that have to prove themselves who they are are Christian folks. Amen. Men and women of God. Those are the only people that have to prove themselves. If somebody shows up and says, <clears throat> hey, you know, I'm a drunk. You believe them. If somebody shows up and says, I'm a swinger. You don't say, show me. <laughs> Do you? Well, I need proof of that. If someone says, hey, you know what? I, I, I'm a Satanist and I'm a witch. You don't say, well, can we go to your meetings? Because I want proof. No, you believe them, right? If somebody says, I'm a drug addict, you, you believe them. They say, hey, I'm a doctor. You believe them. I'm a dentist. You, you don't have, it's, you show up at some event, you see people standing around and they, you know, they are, they look and you're like, what do you do? I, I'm a dentist. I don't believe you. I don't believe you're a dentist. I don't believe you fix teeth. I don't believe none of that mess. No, people just believe you, right? Someone says, you know, I'm a mechanic. They don't say, well, fix my car and prove it to me. No, no other profession, no other thing in this world. Do, pe do we make people prove it to us? Well, I'm a chef. Well, go cook me something right now. You don't do that. I'm a financial investment guy. I work in the stock market. Well, prove it. I want to see your portfolio. No, you believe them. Being a Christian, being a man of God, being a woman of God, this is the only job that people say, well, prove it to me. They did it to Jesus too. I am the son of God. I am the son of the father. If you've seen me, you've seen the father. Well, prove it. Show me a sign. Do me a little trick. Come on, take care. You know, come on, do me something that shows me. I want to see something that proves that you are. This woman had an entire life span of blessings and miracles. And she had months and months to see that she, this guy lived with her. 
He said, I've been sojourning with you for a long time and you've been eating the, the, the meal and, the, and off the oil for a long time. But now that I've done this other thing, now you believe in God. I just want to tell you this. Listen, be like the woman that you'll obey God, but don't wait till you have to see somebody rise from the dead to believe people are true men and women of God. Do not make them go through hoop after hoop after hoop. Well, I still don't believe it. I still don't trust them. I said, you know, the Christian folk are some of the weirdest people on the planet. We will butcher our own in a minute. We will butcher our own in a minute. Church is good as long as this doesn't happen. The Lord is good as long as this doesn't happen. I'll serve God as long as that doesn't happen or this person doesn't do this. Baloney. God's good no matter what. We had a woman show up to the church last week. Came in. I never even talked to her. Never even got to see her. Never got to share a word with her. She never even. She didn't even stay. <clears throat> but she filled out a connection card. Specifically, it's the first time that she had come to visit. People are starting to see our commercial. They're starting to show up. You know, it's 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 exciting. It's good. But she got up and she left before the first worship song ever got played. She got upset because. Uh, there was uh, 80s music being played before the service. And she made sure to write that on the comment section. And it, and it, I, I, and I, I'm in a, I'm in a unique position that where, you know, people, they have a lot to say about me and about what I do. And I, I, you know, I'm used to it sometimes, but this one really bothered me. And I said, because well, there were some chords played that some dude pulled out of the hat and wrote a song in 84. And because those same chords are played in right before the service started, you're going to get up and you're going to take your whole family. You're not, you're not even going to stay and see what happens. You're not even going to stay. You're not even going to try to receive anything. Like you, you are so close-minded. I bet she listens to it at the market. I bet she hears the same songs when she's walking through the store. See, I got delivered from this a long time ago. I went to I went to Bible college, and I was when I when I was when I was coming up in church. This is what I was. They taught me. They said, "If you listen to secular music, you're going to hell." That's what they said. Hell, the real place, right? And 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 it got me afraid. And I remember you remember the scan button on the radios. The search, and you'd hit it, and it would flip. It flipped on the station, and I heard like three chords of a song, and I went, "Ah, God, forgive me." That's how much legalism I was under. That I, that I, literally, I literally believed if I listened to three notes of a song that wasn't a Jesus, that I was going to hell. I got delivered from that, and, and later on, uh, a, a guy. Uh, came to our Bible college named Phil Driscoll. And, and his teaching completely set me free. He said, everything belongs to God. All music is God's. Every note. Those little jingles that you hear on TV that you like so much and you walk around talking about. Where do you think that melody came from? God made that melody. Man's just using that same melody for his stuff. Right? Like a good neighbor... Y'all are going to hell. That ain't Jesus. That's insurance company. Da, 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 da. Going to hell twice. So some of you look a little uncomfortable right now, but I don't really care. <clears throat> Here's my point. Here's my point. She was willing to forego Whatever God had in store for her for, for, for some chords of a song and boom, I'm out. I'm done. I'm taking my family. I'm taking my kids and I'm done. How many people miss 
God because of something they don't really like. I'm telling you, this woman could have said, I don't like the way he asked. I don't like the way he approached me. I don't like what he did. You know, she could have got an attitude with every moment. Oh, I don't care for this and I don't care for that and I don't care for that. I just want to say this. If you're under that much religious bondage, then please get delivered and then come back and try our church because we don't want it. But if you want help getting free from it, we'll help you get free. But that one just bothered me. I was like, Lord, what if, what if, what if she missed, she missed, what if she missed her opportunity to, for her child to get saved or somebody to get prayer at her house? Or what if the word of God, that was the moment in the day God had picked to bring her out of something. What if that was the moment because of something preconceived in her head, she just threw it out the window. Cause this was so unorthodox. You think men walked up to women? No, why do you think they got all tore up because Jesus went up to the woman at the well? Because that ain't what was supposed to happen. <gasps> You're talking to me? You want me? She said, you want me to get you water? He just used it as a line to say, uh, if you drink of the water I have, you'll never thirst. The way this whole thing went about was uncouth. But it was the way God said it. And this woman's crazy act of faith. All right, you know what? My plan is to die after I make my cake and we eat it, but I'm going to make you a little cake first. I'm going to make you a little cake first. Everybody stand with me. Make me a little cake first. Pay attention to when God asks you to do something first. I got plans. But I want you to do this first. Listen, and if the Christian church cannot listen to him first, then what are we doing? Matthew 6, says, seek first. First, first. That's number one. Seek first the kingdom of God. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all other things shall be added unto you. You want to know why that principle worked for this woman? Because that's the principle of the Bible. She sought after what the Lord wanted first and all her other needs were taken care of. And God did, did even greater for her than just eating bread. Having enough meal. And... I got snacks. Thank you for the snacks, Lord. No, when her, when her real need came and her son was dead, she had an avenue. God had given her at that opportunity. And you know what? She went for it. One act of faith opened the door for an even bigger act of faith. Oh, my God. No matter how big or small, church, no matter how big or small, listen to him. Listen to him. Listen to him. Every day I want you to get up in your life every morning and I want you to get up and I want you to say, Lord, help me to hear you speak to me because I don't want to miss an opportunity that you have for me. I know men and, and women, they got all kind of stuff planned for me, but I don't really care much about that. I want what you want because when you get to the end of your days and you stand before God, you will desire to hear the words, well done my good and faithful servant amen father pour out your spirit upon your people help us to have faith in you god let us learn from this woman in every way god lord to even respond even even if it seems small or if it seems large because your plans involve our obedience she could have got angry. She could have got upset. She could have made excuses of why, why she didn't want to make him something first. He's a stranger. I don't even know him. He didn't even tell me who he was. He looks like a creeper. Or she could have made up anything and said, I'm going about my business. She could have been cynical and bitter because of her situation, because her husband wasn't there. She could have been mad about the whole thing. 
But she listened, God, and she obeyed, God. And I thank you for that act of obedience that we can read about today. And it can inspire somebody in here today to continue to follow you, Lord. And we ask and we pray and we seek your face about this, Lord. And we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Let our faith come out. Let our acts of faith, Lord, faith without works is dead. So let it become an act of faith that's alive. That's our prayer, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Somebody praise the Lord. Amen. Come on, praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Lord, you are good. You are so good. Amen. If you were blessed today, I encourage you to go online and share something positive. Share something you learned today on your social media. Amen. Let the world know that you are a child of God. All right, listen, just a few quick announcements. Uh, prayer on Mondays, 6 p.m. Join us in prayer. Also join us for Bible study on Tuesday nights at 7. Our fuel students meet here as, as well as we do for refuel every Wednesday. We have service Wednesday nights here, and I'll tell you, it is some powerful times that we share together here on Wednesday nights and it is such a blessing so if you are free you can make it I encourage you to get here and get recharged in your faith this coming Saturday is our VBS event July the 30th get your kids signed up bring them have a good time uh, all of it's free there's food games we got a, a team that's coming they're going to do puppets they're going to do all kind of uh, lessons it's going to be a blessing. So if you would like to help with that, we need your help. All right. So please sign up with Elizabeth right there on the second row. All right. There's a couple retreats. The, the student fuel students are having a, a youth retreat on September 2nd. And the ladies are having a women's retreat on September 15th. So sign up your teenagers and ladies sign up for this retreat. It will be a blessing to you. They're going to. Uh, Rockfish Meadows, uh, where the men go, and the ladies went down there last year for the first time, and it was a blessing. And Dean will be doing all your cooking as well, so y'all don't have to be in the kitchen doing everything yourself. That's going to be an amazing time in the Spirit of God. I'm telling you, I am so amped up about what God's doing in, in our youth and in our ladies. God is really pouring His Spirit out. Amen. All right. Our volunteer of the month is Pastor Bobby Ray Biddle. Can I get a smile? He's my friend. That's my friend. All right. The youth are also having on August the 13th, they're having their own car show. And uh, it's going to help raise money for all the stuff they need. All right, so let's uh, let's be a blessing. Are they y'all got y'all are having food as well? So y'all come out, look, check out the cars, support, buy some hot dogs, hamburgers, whatever they're selling, and be a blessing to them. All right, do we have any first-time guests in the house? Raise your hand, Sam. A first-time guest, right here. One, two. Anybody else? Let me see. Hey Amen. Let's give them a big finish line. God bless you. Hey Amen. Thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. If you guys want to fill out a connection card, you can go through those double doors and turn left. Somebody will be there to help you. You get a free gift just for being here with us. We think that that is worth something. Praise God. Hey Amen. Everybody else, the first time you come, you're a guest. Second time you come, you're family and there's nothing you can do about it. All right. Amen. We love you. We appreciate you. I want you to go out here and have a safe rest of the day, but I want you to be safe and hydrate. A lot of people go through a lot of medical stuff because they don't keep enough water in their body. And this heat out here will get you in a minute. All right. So let's pray. Father, bless us as we go. Lord, we thank you for wisdom and knowledge. We thank you for the word of God, for the life that it is. Let it quicken us and help us. And I pray, God, that the greatest acts of faith that we will have are in front of us. In Jesus' name, everybody said amen. amen. God bless you. We love you. Keep the faith to the finish line. We appreciate y'all. Y'all have a great rest of the day.